Phoenix Suns owner Robert Sarver is accused of overseeing an organization that many employees have described as toxic and sometimes hostile, a report from ESPN's Baxter Holmes reveals. Holmes interviewed more than 70, that's seven with a zero, 70 former and current Suns employees who have been part of the team throughout Sarver's 17-year tenure. According to the report, Sarver has used racially insensitive and lewd language repeatedly in the office and displayed conduct employees recount as inappropriate and misogynistic. Multiple current and former employees also told ESPN about conduct by other members of the Suns' leadership team they felt contributed to the work environment. While none said Sarver was involved in those incidents, many felt that Sarver's own conduct contributed to a culture that affected how some other managers within the organization treated their employees. As I've said, fish rots from the head down, mm. right? This culture starts at the top, usually. Um, so there's a lot to get into here, guys. What were your first thoughts when you read the article? So I read through it multiple times. And first off, I have no room in my soul or heart for racism or misogyny. Um, and I still think there is a due diligence process that the NBA has to go through. I've heard as a former player for years about jokes or things that Robert Sauver would say that would be extremely inappropriate. I spoke to multiple people last evening, some people referenced in the article, some people not, uh, about their experiences with Robert Sauver. Look, I think where this gets really interesting is, are there facts? Are there actual evidence of these things being done? With Donald Sterling, you had evidence, right? Evidence that everybody could see. Now, 70 people, a lot of people. Uh, out of those 70 people, I wonder what percent of those people claim that it was the way we're talking about it right now, as, as opposed to what percent of people actually said, hey, I don't know anything about this. Um, Good point. It, it, it's going to be automatically hear 70 and go, oh, all 70 people said the worst thing that yes, was said. Yes, right? so we didn't Good hear point. all 70 yep. people saying that. So, look, I, I still think there's a lot more evidence to come out. I, I think the evidence I have from guys like Earl Watson who coached there, uh, other executives that were anonymous, I don't think there's enough in the article to remove him as an owner from what's in the article. I think we have to see a lot more before we can get to that point. But in the court of public opinion – you will definitely look at Robert Sarver drastically different now than you have before. You asked when reading the article, what you know, what did you think? What did you come away with? Well, first thing, my ears pop up, boom. So as I'm reading it and I'm sitting there and I'm saying, because you know, obviously, being in Los Angeles and, and being around the Donald Sterling situation because of being in L.A. and it's like, okay, but. We know what that is. Donald Sterling had 50 years of issues, right? So we kind of, the video and the he whole He was deal. a slumlord. It goes yeah, on, and on, on and on and on. On and on. So yeah. it's kind of like that was an easy one. Yeah. Then when you look at Jerry Richardson, former NFL owner of the Carolina Panthers, having been there, played for him, you could kind of see, oh, okay, this is what it is. So to me, that one was a little bit easy because there was a paper trail from uh, – settlements and lawsuits and things of that nature that had taken place at that point in time. This one is a little bit different because it's not as much yet, right? There's some meat, but we don't know when we get into the bone. There's a lot of smoke. There's a lot of, but everybody ain't lying. Everybody mm -hmm. can't be lying and making the stories up, right? Some people feel a certain way on how they were handled, whether they were working with him in the past or whether they're current employers. They feel a certain way about how they've been treated. So I think the NBA's investigation and in opening up to it certainly would poke holes in, in what he's in his lawyers and representatives are saying did not happen because it's going to be there. Well, can, Something's it, it, going to be there. We just don't know what the something is. I was just going to say, you know, the NBA made a statement and said the NBA had not received a complaint of misconduct at the Suns organization through any of our processes, including our confidential workplace misconduct hotline or any other correspondence. That's so, like, true. Let me say one thing about that. I agree. That's a good. That's that's a good counter, right? Hey, no, we never got to us ever this entire time. 
But what I also got from the article, well, and I and I, I I think that's a very good point, Jay. When you said earlier, all we don't know what all seventy people said. We yes. just know that ba- Baxter Holmes spoke to seventy people. But many people, it seems from the article, it's clear that you know made similar claims about mm-hmm. the behavior. So to Key's point, just like we say about Deshaun Watson, this is not one woman making a claim. He said, she said. This is twenty three separate. Women make, and so you start to go, uh, come on, dude. Wh- whatever due process legally is, right? There is the court of public opinion, as you said. Same thing with Sarver. Mm-hmm. Many people saying, telling you similar things about someone, it's easy in the court of public opinion to convict. When you say the league hadn't gotten a complaint, in the article was people were afraid in the Suns organization to go to HR. Yes. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. And I I can say that even if we can sit here now and say, well, the league is not the Suns HR, to an employee who is disempowered, all this stuff is about power dynamics, right? Sarver's in charge. To 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 an employee who doesn't have a lot of leverage and doesn't have a lot of power, people don't always distinguish in their mind, uh, well, this authority is with the team, this authority is with the league. They just know, I can't say anything. If I go to, oh, don't go to HR, it may it, it, under those conditions, people may not go to the league because they know I oh, I saw someone try to take this to an authority mm-hmm. to correct it and it and it, they got in trouble or it made it worse for them. Uh, so I, I understand what you're saying. I hear what, what you're but, saying too. But yeah, I yes. think there I think there's time, something there. A, a, it's a culture. A, a lot of times in these situations, people are afraid yeah. because they're not at the top of the pecking order. They're at the bottom and they got to feed their families, and so they don't they can't distinguish the difference like you said max between the 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 mba's uh hr or security team and and, and investigators versus the phoenix suns hr because as far as i'm concerned if you would have said that to me i'd have been like they connected he gonna talk to him and they gonna talk to each other 